every day and everywhere. We are constantly exposed to pathogens such as bacteria and viruses. But our bodies are made of an army called the immune system which does a fantastic job of fighting off pathogens in order to protect us from previously encountered infections. Furthermore, novel therapeutics has helped us in combating deadly infections. However, history has shown that exposure to alien pathogens can be very life-threatening, with pandemics on the horizon. This was the case in many historical pandemic events, especially the 1918 Spanish flu, which resulted in a worldwide death of an estimated 50 million people, pointing to the struggles our immune system faces when challenged by unknown pathogens. But can selection pressure favor our immune system to overcome such alien infection? In this video, I will share with you a recently discovered mechanism for protection from an unknown viral infection through natural selection. Hola, I am Temitokwe Etibo. Welcome to my channel. This is LifeSci Exposition. The immune system works like an army to keep foreign organisms in check and prevent foreign particles from invading our body, thereby keeping us healthy. Although this army is a fantastic fighter against known pathogens, what remains mysterious is if and how they fight against unknown infections. The answer to this question was revealed in a recent scientific study using rabbits as a model. And this study begins with a famous natural experiment that took place in Australia a long, long time ago. You see, there was an avid English hunter named Thomas Hostin, who regularly dedicated his weekends to rabbit shooting. But after he migrated to Australia, he was quite bored because Australia had no native rabbit population which could be hunted. So, in 1859, he asked his nephew to send him about two dozens of European feral rabbits for hunting purposes. Australia had the perfect conditions for rabbit breeding. They had mild winter which allowed for rabbits to reproduce all year long, and widespread farming allowed for easy access to food. Moreover, there were no natural rabbit predators. Within 10 years of their introduction to Australia, they increased to a devastating extent that if 2 million rabbits were killed every year, it barely affected their population. After a century, they numbered hundreds of millions. The rabbits wreaked so much havoc on Australia's ecosystem, devouring plants and destroying flora and fauna. At this point, the Australian government tried to eradicate the rabbits using different methods, but all to no avail. One time, they even tried to build a 1,700 km rabbit proof fence. You guessed it. The rabbits reproduced and migrated faster than the fencing was completed. It was such a complete waste of time, effort and taxpayers' money. So in the year 1950, they decided to try out a biological experiment that could effectively wipe out the rabbits. To achieve this, a pox virus known as Pyxoma virus was deliberately released to control the growing rabbit population. But this was a dangerous move since the virus could spread to humans and kill us, right? Actually, the opposite is true. Since humans are not permissible to myxoma infection, we are safe from the virus. Furthermore, myxoma virus only causes benign skin cancer in their natural host, the Brazilian rabbits, but results in a lethal disease called myxomatosis in European rabbits. If you remember, the rabbits Thomas Austin brought to Australia were European, so one could conceive this to be a foolproof method, but first, we need to know how effective the virus was. In the first year of release, the virus was so efficient in killing rabbits with an astonishing 99.8% mortality rate. Surprisingly, the mortality dropped dramatically to just 25% in the second year. In subsequent years, the rate of killing was lower than the reproductive rate of the rabbits and hopes for a 100% eradication were completely dashed. Two years after the virus was released in Australia, it was also illegally introduced in France and in 1953, it accidentally reached the United Kingdom, leading to similarly devastating results in both countries. This rapid resistance to a previously unknown viral infection has since piqued the interest of scientists. Interesting, right? While watching this video, remember to subscribe and click the notification bell. So, a group of international scientists decided to investigate how these rabbits quickly became immune to such a deadly unknown virus. 
You see, a simple evolutionary theory holds the key. When pathogens are introduced into a new population, selection pressures can lead to evolution of both hosts and pathogen. The pathogen must adapt to a new host in order to replicate, while the host becomes resistant to infection in order to survive. This host-pathogen equilibrium leads to an evolutionary arms race, which sounds like a full-blown war, but it is more of a peace treaty where both parties must survive. In order to understand the genetic basis of Mixoma virus resistance in European rabbits, the researchers extracted DNA from nearly 200 rabbits dating from 1865 to 2013 and examined the coding region from the genome of the modern rabbits from Australia, France and the United Kingdom where Mixoma virus had also been released. And compared with historical rabbits from museums that had been stored before the virus were released. The first examination of the data revealed that more rabbit alleles changed in frequencies across the three countries than would be expected by chance. The vast majority of the single nucleotide polymorphisms SNPs, were also present in museum samples. This observation explains why rabbit resistance to myxoma virus arose so rapidly. Interestingly, the mutations were already in the population about 800 years ago. It is a very curious case where natural selection acted upon standing genetic variation that was already present in ancestral European rabbit populations. Some of the rabbit alleles with an increased frequency are within one of the interferon genes which encode the protein of the first line of defense against viruses. The proteins carrying these changes were more effective at inhibiting replication of an attenuated strain of myxoma virus. It is possible that virulence myxoma virus selected for increased potency of this particular interferon. Another SNP occurred in the rabbit gene encoding VPS4, which is not antiviral but is required for viral replication. The change might in some way alter VPS4 so that it is less able to support viral replication. SNPs were also found in the gene encoding the protein needed for proteasome function. The proteasome is needed for myxoma virus replication and it is possible that the changes in the gene have suppressed this function. It is important to know that only 1% of the selected alleles have become fixed in the modern rabbit population. The implication is that resistance to myxoma virus infection involves multiple genes which vary in frequency across the genome. Consequently, virus reproduction is reduced but not eliminated. This situation would favor the emergence of more virulent viruses, which was observed after the initial decline in viral virulence. As might be expected, these viruses have become highly immunosuppressive to counter the effects of changes in the host immune system described in this study. This is a classic case of counter-evolution, or should we say, parallel evolution. At the end of the day, polymorphisms that were already present in the rabbits long before they were infected by myxoma virus protected them from infection despite not being previously immune to the virus. Isn't that fascinating? Thanks for watching the Life Sci Exposition. If you like this video, check out my next video on how scientists showed the health risks associated with long space travel. Subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to receive new video updates. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them down below in the comment section. And if you find this video helpful, like and share with family and friends. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Ciao ciao!